Good evening, friends. Imagine, if you will, a donkey that's equally hungry and thirsty, placed precisely at the midpoint between a stack of hay and a pail of water. Now, this donkey, let's call him Baradon's ass, after the philosopher who made him famous, faces a dilemma. If the forces of hunger and thirst are perfectly balanced, how does he choose? Poor fellow might just stand still, frozen by indecision, until the pangs of hunger or the dryness of the throat take hold. But isn't that a bit like us at times? Caught between choices, desires, or possibilities, how do we decide? And that, my friends, is where we embark on our journey tonight. Now, let's picture the landscape of thought that we're about to traverse. It's vast and varied, with towering mountains of conviction and wide, open plains of speculation. In the distance, the dim lights of ancient wisdom flicker, while the road beneath our feet is paved with the cobbled stones of modern reasoning. We're about to walk through a philosophical territory that questions the very essence of our will. Are we truly free in our choices, or are we led by unseen forces bound by the chains of causality and necessity? What is it that drives a decision? Is it the weight of logic, the pull of emotion, or perhaps the invisible hand of destiny nudging us along. This is the crux of our central question tonight. If given two equally favorable options, by what process do we arrive at our choice? Is the freedom to choose an illusion, a mere dance of neurons firing in the brain, or is it the very thing that defines our humanity? As we delve into this theme, consider a simple choice in your own life, coffee or tea in the morning, the decision may seem trivial, but it's a microcosm of the free will versus determinism debate. On one hand, you might crave the robustness of coffee, the way it commands your senses to awaken. On the other, the soothing whisper of tea could be what your soul yearns for. Each choice could lead to a slightly different day. And yet we often make such decisions without a second thought, almost as if we're on autopilot. The fabric of our lives is woven with these threads, each a choice made, a path taken. Throughout history, philosophers, both renowned and obscure, have wrestled with this paradox. Aristotle pondered the nature of choice and chance, while more recently, Daniel Dennett explored the complexities of free will in the context of modern science. They, like many others, left us with a tapestry of thoughts, a mosaic where each piece reflects a part of the puzzle. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit, Aristotle mused, suggesting that perhaps our choices stem from the patterns we've etched into our very being. But let's take a moment to step back in time, to an era where our paradox played out not in theory, but on the grand stage of history. Consider the Renaissance, a period rife with change and choice. The decision to embrace the new art of science over the comfort of old beliefs shaped the course of history. Take Galileo, whose choice to support the heliocentric model, a choice of reason over dogma, led to his confrontation with the church. His commitment to what he believed to be true, despite intense external pressures, echoes the battle of free will against determinism. Now, what are the ethical implications of this paradox? If our will is not free, if our choices are predetermined, where does that leave the concept of morality? Let's look at a modern ethical dilemma. Autonomous vehicles. If an accident is unavoidable, should the vehicle's AI be programmed to minimize overall harm, even if it means sacrificing the passengers? This decision, programmed into lines of code, encapsulates the tension between individual choice and the deterministic algorithms that interpret data to make a decision. Our culture reflects this struggle too. Literature, music, and film often grapple with the concept of choice. Take for example the novel The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost, a poignant meditation on the paths we choose and the ones we leave behind. The verse, two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference, speaks to the heart of our topic tonight, 
illuminating the weight of choice and the mystery of paths untaken. Even now, debates rage on in scientific, philosophical, and public forums about the nature of free will. Do we possess it, or are we merely sophisticated biological machines responding to stimuli with programmed responses? Some argue that neuroscience is uncovering the deterministic nature of our actions, while others claim that quantum mechanics introduces an element of randomness, a crack in determinism's armor. The relevance of this debate is undeniable. As technology advances and our understanding of the brain deepens, we're confronted with questions about the nature of personhood, responsibility, and the essence of what it means to be human. Could it be that our choices are not our own, but the outcome of a complex interplay between biology, environment, and something altogether indefinable? As we bring our ideas together, we might say that each choice, like the threads in a tapestry, is both individual and part of a greater design. Perhaps the paradox of Buridan's ass is not a trap of indecision, but a reflection of the rich tapestry of factors that make up our lives. In recognizing this, maybe we can find comfort in the choices we face, knowing that each one is a testament to the complexity of our existence. I want to thank you all for joining me on this philosophical expedition. It is in these shared moments of inquiry that we truly see the importance of each other's ideas and experiences. Before you go, I leave you with a few questions to ponder. How do you define free will in your life? Have there been moments when you felt the weight of determinism on your shoulders? Share your thoughts, your stories, and let's continue this conversation. And with that, my friends, I bid you a warm and thoughtful good night. May your choices, be they small like tea or coffee, or grand as the stars in the sky, be made with both freedom and reflection. Always remember the journey is as important as the destination, and every step, every choice, is part of what makes you, unmistakably, you.